Hey there, back again from the last video. In this video, we're going to see that how we can actually consume the JSON data, which is also known as decoding the JSON data. In many of the application, JSON data will come to you maybe as an API resource or maybe some other instance of Golang or maybe some other backend that is being designed, and you want to consume this JSON data. So far in the previous videos, whatever we have seen in the web servers and stuff, we haven't actually truly consumed the data. It was just in the string format. Now we want to see that how actually we can consume that so that we can focus on just one thing at a time. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. And of course, we are going to wrap this up into a second method. So let's go ahead and call this one as uh, decode JSON. Again, very creative. Okay, the first thing that we need is is to have a JSON data. Of course, I can request it from the web and grab and all of that. Uh, that is going to create additional issues. Right now, the focus is just to learn how to consume JSON. If you bring up any more web requests and stuff, it's going to make things a little bit complex. I like to keep things simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and copy this from the last request. Remember, uh, we package all of this and JSON. So this will also be, again, a verification that if our JSON data is OK, decent or not. So go ahead and copy all of this. And I'm going to be using this. So let me just go ahead and close this one. And I want to create a JSON data. So I'm going to call this an, as simply JSON data from web. I don't know from where this is coming up. But yeah, this is a, let's assume that this JS data is going to be coming up from there. Now, the data that you're going to be seeing or receiving from the web is going to be in this format. So it's going to be a slice of byte. Remember. If you remember from a few videos ago, I told you that whenever any data comes up from the web, it's actually in the byte format. We have to wrap it around a string. In that case, we are just converting that bytes into the string. But sometimes you don't want to do that. You don't want to convert that into string. You want to consume that as JSON. So that's exactly what we are going to do in this one. And here we are going to use just this byte. And what you can do is you can use the backticks, hit enter one more time. And then you can just go ahead and paste this data. Obviously, this needs to be aligned properly uh, so that it looks nice and stuff. So this is the JSON data. Obviously, this is declared but not used. But this is not a kind of a correct way of consuming the data. Let's go ahead and move this. So this needs to go in its own line. And let's go ahead and move this also in the same line. So it's a little bit more readable, nothing much. And there we go. This looks nice. And we also need to remove this comma because there's just one data that's consuming it. And I guess that's pretty much it. OK, so far it looks good. But I'm not sure that this data is actually correct JSON or not. Probably there's an additional comma. My application doesn't accept that. I need to be verifying. I need to be sure that this data is actually in the correct format and correct JSON format. So how we can do that? Yes, this is a common practice. That's why Golang actually does this out of the box for you. Let me go ahead and show you that. So first, uh, let's go ahead and create a variable. Let's call this one as LCO course. LCO course, one more time. This will be of type course. Remember, course is a struct. In case you forgot that, jog your memory. Uh, course is a type of struct. We need to create that data. The theory behind this is that whatever the data is coming up from the web, I have created a structure for it, and I want to put that into structure. Maybe this is your use case. Maybe this is not your use case. I have another example for that as well, so have some patience. OK, so this is all done. Now I want to check whether this JSON data, fake JSON data that I've created, is valid or not. And JSON, again, coming up from encoding JSON, it also allows you to do that. You can go ahead and just ask that, hey, valid. This is going to validate JSON. Yeah, right out of the box. No need to write anything. And we're going to say that whatever the JSON data coming up from the web, is it valid or not? I need to store this result as well. So I'm going to say check valid. And no, it doesn't give you error as a return. It just gives you a Boolean value of yes and no. And you can just print that out. And instead of printing this out, let's just use that into an if and else format. So we're going to go ahead and say that if the check valid, that means if the JSON data is valid, then only we are going to jump into this one. First, we are going to have a print uh, printf messes, message that says uh, JSON was uh, valid. Yeah, pretty obvious message. And then we are going to go ahead and say, hey, JSON, I previously did a marshal on you or a marshal indent. This time, I just want to do an unmarshal. It's that simple in the Golang. Yeah, I told you, eventually, when you start working more in the, in the Golang, you just get fall into love with this language. So it requires a couple of parameters. The first one is the data itself. And second is the interface. 
another name for struct yes you get that this time but the problem is that you don't want to pass on just an interface like that because it might give you a copy of that and you want to actually store all of this data up here in these cases if you are not pretty sure you can go ahead and pass on a reference of it so let's go ahead and pass on a reference of this again just an example probably this is a use case for you probably not but i really want to show that i am not passing on this variable as a copy because this is a method and we we saw that when we pass on things into functions or methods sometimes copies just just get along i don't want to be that case so i'm just going to go ahead and pass on a reference and once that is being done i'm going to go ahead and say hi i will be using a print f statement for you and i'm going to go ahead and print this entire stuff out so in order to print these statement first let's use the double quotes in order to use or print these uh, interfaces we need to have a special syntax which is this hash or pound sign and then we can use this v so percent pound sign pound sign and then the v for variable and then slash n for a new line obviously let's go ahead and put up a comma and say lco lco course and there we go we're going to go ahead and print this if this doesn't work then probably for some reason we have some issues in our json we're going to go ahead and print up a message that says that json was not valid on the upper case because somebody might be yelling you in that case okay let's go ahead and break our json in the first so putting up an extra comma at the end obviously is going to break this and we don't want to have an encoded json this time we have worked on that so this time let's decode some json there we go let's see and expect some of the errors hopefully only the planned one will come probably probably not let's run this one it says json was not valid so pretty obvious and we can get rid of this comma now hopefully this will be valid now just assuming and there we go it says json was valid and we can see that inside this we get this course which is uh, this entire name react uh, boot camp and everything so what's happening all of the json that is coming up i uh, remember the course name which is an equivalent it will just go ahead and automatically look up for the structure it says hey in the json whatever is coming up as a course name it's not actually a course name in my struct that's an alias it needs to go inside the field of name so the property name will be populated with that and notice here how smart it is that it is automatically pulling up the name and doing all of this and notice here password since you didn't pass on any password it didn't add any value and the tags automatically it does everything for us so in a majority of the big application you will be using the same syntax you will be creating a struct or aka classes of golang and we'll be pulling up the data just like this and we'll be just unmarshaling so this is a common common syntax uh, but uh, this is not always the case uh, there are uh, some cases uh, where you just want to add data to a key value pair that's kind of a common syntax i don't want to create a structure every time maybe i'm not interested in too much just fill up all of this data and give me a key value pair so that i can extract the values based on the keys and value yeah that's a, a kind of a common syntax of that as well so how we're going to do that it's actually also pretty easy so let's call this one as simply a variable let's call this one as my online uh, data obviously this is going to be a map but it needs to have some name that's why i call this one and we're going to go ahead and create a map uh, you can use other keywords like remember we we talked about the new keyword and stuff yeah you can do that but you can go ahead and directly create a map like this this is going to be a type of string and since the data is coming up uh, from the online web i'm not sure the rest of the part is going to be in itself uh, always a string because there can be an array that can come in we saw that in the tags case so in that case you go ahead and say hey I don't know what data is coming up so I'm going to go ahead and say this is an interface and you can just populate it like that. Yeah, a little bit weird, but this is actual use case. Remember, always remember that whenever you're creating a map for online json, the string, the first value is key value pair, that is a guarantee, but the value is not a guarantee. It can be an integer, it can be a string, it can be an array or further down an object itself. So just remember that is why we create this one here. And apart from this, rest is pretty simple. You use your same JSON dot unmarshal, provide two values in this case. So we're going to say, hey, the data that is coming up from the JSON data from the web, and obviously I want to pass on a reference. Remember, I don't want to just say, hey, copy of that. I'm going to say my online data. That is all done. 
and uh, let's go ahead and print this out so I can just go ahead and borrow this line and don't worry I'll I'll show you how to loop it through as well and that is looking nice but instead of this let's go ahead copy this paste that and in the second time we are printing my online data let's see how it looks at, at least on the printing stuff if I run this and notice here this time in the second line not this one right from here where we are creating this map string and interface uh, we have this price as a key value is 299 course name as key value as this and then there is a tags which is an array of interface again we have key value pairs and stuff but the good thing is although this looks a little bit of complex but truly it is not let me show you what i mean by that all we can do is you you can use your favorite loop for key and value which is going to be coming up from range in my online data and i can go ahead and just print both of them so i'm going to go ahead and say that key is and let's use a placeholder person v and value is and let's use a person v as a placeholder again and i forgot double quotes my bad there we go and this is f print f i don't know from where this is coming up print f yeah that is nice now we need to just fill up two values and we can actually get the type of that data as well let's go ahead and do that and type of of and something better and type is yeah and again favorite person t now let's fill up the blank we are going to go ahead and say that hey we need to fill up the blank uh, let's first fill up the key because that's one value and the value yeah that makes sense and additionally just one more thing slash n okay looks nice let's go ahead and try to print this out and see what changes we have made while consuming the json data okay so pretty nice and easy we can see that the key is website and again order is not guaranteed in the key value pairs or maps or hash hash keys there, there are so many names of that so website and the value of learn code online is of type string that's nice and the tags uh, value is web dev and js of course this is a slice remember in the earlier videos we talked that these are not comma separated but you can go ahead and further loop it down and this is an array interface so you can find the type here and can work on with that then we have got the course name of course it is a string and this is a float 64 although i created it as uh, as an int if i can show you that i created that as an integer but it is being treated as float 64 because that, that's the maximum precision value and golang is pretty smart to do so obviously you can manually just force that by creating a structure but again you get the idea you get the idea so i hope you have enjoyed this one and now you are pretty much ready that if any data comes up from the web you know it is going to be in the byte format you can either convert it into a string or create a structure to handle the data into the json or just loop through it i hope you have enjoyed this one this one was quite long and that's all what we're going to do for tonight you can obviously hit the next video and the next video will be there but i'm going to catch you up tomorrow for you, just the next video.